So we're now going to discuss how to prove the min-max theorem once you have the bounded function theorem. So let's formulate the min-max theorem. So it says that if f is continuous on AB, this implies that there exists points u and l in AB such that f of x is always bigger than f of l and always smaller than f of u for all x in AB. So in terms of a drawing, this says that if I have my a here, my b here, and my function looks something like this, then there exists at least one point where I take my global max and one point where I take my global min. Now we already have proven the bounded function theorem and the bounded function theorem gives us the existence of a height c and minus c such that this graph here lies above that line and below that line. Now, we're just going to outline the proof and we're just going to outline the proof of this part of the statement. And what can we do? Well, the proof is in four steps. So let's outline them. So step one is to consider the set of values that the function takes. So the set of f of x, where x is in a, b. What we can notice here is that this set here has upper bound. So this means by the completeness axiom that m has least upper bound. Let's call it L. So if we knew that we had an upper bound C here, the completeness axiom tells us that we have a least upper bound L. And notice the least upper bound ought to be equal to the global maximum of the function. So this is what we need to prove now. So how do we do this? Well, in step two, we are now going to try to get the bolzano weierstrass theorem into play. And keep in mind, so I'm not going to write it up, but the bolzano weierstrass says that any sequence in the closed and bounded interval AB has a convergent subsequence. How can we now get a sequence from this? Well, notice here. So L is the least upper bound. So if I now consider L minus one, which is, I don't know, maybe it's at this height here, then I do know that since L was the least upper bound for the values that F takes, then L minus one is not an upper bound for the values that F take, meaning that F takes values above L minus one. And in this way, we can establish a sequence, we can call it Xn in AB, so that F at Xn is strictly bigger than L minus one over N. So here I took minus one, but you could also do the same if you took minus one over n here. And now that we have a sequence xn, how do we use it? Well, we apply Ulsan Weierstrass. So in step three, use Ulsan Weierstrass to prove there exists a point u in AB such that f of u is bigger than or equal to L. So basically what you need to do here is to combine bolson weierstrass with what you know in step two. And if you want, you could do this type of uh, what if argument we did in the proof of the bounded function lemma. So just assume that this x ends converge. Can you get this then, okay? And in the real world, you don't know that this exists, but then you can use bolson weierstrass to get basically the same thing. And finally, step four, prove that f of u is less than or equal to L and conclude that f of u is equal to l, and then you're done. How can I prove something like this? Well, who was this guy anyway? So I'll leave filling in the details as a challenge to you, and with this, uh, this movie is done.